Hello, welcome to Yelling at Birds. Matt here. I appreciate you being here with me today. Um, last night I was able to have the pleasure of interviewing Tony, and I really appreciate uh, his his story, um, what he's been through, and what he's learned from it, and uh, just kind of where he is in his life. Uh, these are things, you know. I I love to do th to do this. I love to um, listen to people, learn from people, and just get a better understanding of, of different people's experiences through life. And that's what this, this whole thing's about. Um, I will admit this was, there was, it was not from an interview standpoint, but from an editing standpoint, it was challenging because I had a little, but there was like a little buzz, audio buzz, something must not have been plugged in all the way. So I kind of tweaked it and got it as, as best I could with the technology I have. Another thing that it just kind of is what it is at this point, and uh, you know, hopefully, it's a learning experience for me and moving forward, and something that I just continue to improve on. So, um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, following following this is my interview with Tony. Enjoy. These things, like even if I'm even when I'm just like sitting at a computer by myself talking, it's the thought of setting up a camera and like hitting record. That's like the biggest hurdle. Mm -hmm. And like once you do that, you're like, oh, this is fuck, this is fine. Right. Like, whatever. And it's the, the the hard part's over. Just like this. So for interviews with me, it's it's the setup of okay, now I'm kinda nervous because I don't want to waste somebody's time and I don't wanna mm -hmm. like my time, mm -hmm. I don't care. Um, my table's still <laughs> my god. We'll, we'll sign something on the table. <laughs> It'll be fine. <sighs> um Yeah. So that's that's basically it. That's mm -hmm. setup. Yeah. Um, I'll do a welcome, and then I'll do a welcome. Welcome to Yelling at Birds. Matt here with Tony. Hello, hello. Um, we are uh, known each other for a while. When's the, you want to talk about the last time you saw me? I was <laughs> so for our our whoever the hell is watching this. Um, when I go downtown, it's usually like. A Broadway production. No, I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. um, but I was rather in a mood. I was upset or so. I don't know. I was actually like in a bad mood that day, and I was just right. trying to blow off some steam. I think I could tell. I really yeah. was not drinking that much. I was just, I was bored. <laughs> sure. Just like, <laughs> and he was bartending, and he was serving me, and I was hitting on him ferociously. <laughs> I mean, like, very obvious statements and it's funny now a year later he's in my, my my kitchen so yeah yeah well everybody likes to feel beautiful <laughs> there you go. so thank you very much there you go even big, though he's extremely straight it was a big compliment <laughs> and, and he, you know but but i have tony here uh we're just gonna have a have a little chat uh if if i need someone to save me from zombies me awesome. i'll just get to get you that shirt i know there you go yeah which one is it? The the tight Rick shirt? The tight Rick the, shirt. I'm yeah. sorry, the tight Rick shirt. <laughs> when you did that, the Jeep commercial? Yeah. Oh, God. Nice. Sorry. Sorry. Good to know. Anyway, moving forward. Uh, well, my, name, my name is Tony Carpenter. I've lived in uh, La Crosse, Wisconsin for, well, since yeah, April of 2018. And I kind of moved here. I needed a restart. Okay. I needed a reboot with life. And so far, so good. Yeah. I have a job, and I'm working, and I'm taking care of myself. Perfect. So, what do you do in lacrosse? I work for Empire Screen Printing. Um, we make, basically, warning labels, stickers. Stuff okay. Like that. Um, and it's a, it's a good experience to, to the craft. Um, there's a lot you can do, a lot, a lot you can say. I had prior experience with uh, screen printing in Ohio with Abercrombie and Fitch. Okay. And I fell in love with it because the art form, there are so many things you can do. Yeah. You can make a lot of money if you know what you're doing. Sure. Um, there's there's a lot of, for me, there's a lot of voice in that with the art, the art oh, form. For sure. Yeah. Definitely. Um, so uh, I eventually want to do my own t-shirt shop um, for stuff on the internet. Um, mm -hmm. Trying to get to the point where I can start barbering, apprenticeship for barbering. Okay. Um, I've wanted to do that since 2015, but every it, it's one of those things. And that, again, that podcast I listened to today, yeah, it's like I really I'm going to do it. I'm going to start that dream job. I'm going to start that dream career, right? And then 
some astronomical just asteroid falls out of the sky and the universe is like, no, sorry. <laughs> Not so that. I'm taking that as I really need to work on me and what's right. here right. instead of just going for it. So okay. sometimes you should. You should go for it. Right, right. But I need to take a couple years, two, maybe three years to just work on my finances, get everything in order, you know, because once I start barbering, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep going until right. I obtain my license. Right. So, yeah. And that's what I, sometimes that, um, everybody has like those distractions or those escapes from stuff. And some, for some people, it, maybe it is that, oh, you know what, this would be fun now. Okay, let's do it. Oh no, it right. didn't work out. Wait, right. let's do this whole thing. And right. in the whole time, if exactly. you would have just like, hey, just take a break. Like, let's, how are you doing? Let's look at you. Let's, you know, figure out maybe, maybe there's a reason why there's all these things I want to do, do, do. Right. Um, right. But I, I, I relate to that. Yeah. Because, you know, yeah. I was always, um, you know, I'm the, I have like, you know, 30 notebooks of, at home of like ideas and stuff. So always like, oh, an idea to, for something. Right. And then I just let myself get distracted See, with something else. I have an online journal, penzu.com, okay. penzu.com. And I have a, I mean, this goes back to like 2013. Okay. Of just endless things that I've thought about, you know, just right. journaling, journaling, journaling. But I tend to type faster than I am in my handwriting. So <laughs> oh, it's easier that way. Yeah. No, yeah. same, same. And my hand hurts after a while. Mm -hmm. So like, why not? Mm -hmm. Um, you mentioned, so you came here in 2018. Why did you need a life change? So before you started filming this, what I mentioned, uh, 2016, my brother, I had a half brother that took his life. Okay. Um, there was some, some issues with, with mental health. Um, and unfortunately, that's how that ended. Okay. Um, a good friend of mine, she passed away um, from PCOS, aplastic anemia. It's basically super anemic um, okay. with complications with childbirth. And then um, at, at that same time, my mom was going through a divorce. I lived with my mom for a minute. It, there was we were arguing every day. I had to get myself grounded and take care of me for, for me. No one else okay. but me, you know? Yeah. Um, I had dealt with some issues with homelessness for a minute. Um, there was just chronic lies. I was, I literally, I was stealing small things from the gas station. Okay. You know, and that was like these people that, that work there knew me from when I was an infant, you know, and it's just like, okay, what's the problem? We need to get under the hood and take care of it. Yeah. So I have a brother, the brother I live with here, um, two brothers here in, in Wisconsin. They grew up here. I grew up in Ohio. Um, and he, I called him up and I said, I, I need to start over. And he says, you got a bed, you got a awesome. bedroom, so they hit the ground running. Yeah. 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 So, so what was that like to know? I mean, that's if you didn't have like somebody up here, let's say, right? Like, how does that, how does that play out? Like, you need a new, you need a fresh start, but there's nowhere to go. Exactly. Right. And I'm thankful that I had that place to go, mm -hmm. you know, um, because I'm, I have the ability to have health care. De somewhat decent healthcare. Mm -hmm. I have the ability to work for a company that is 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 pretty. I don't want to say tolerant. I want to say just accepting of certain issues, okay. certain things. Um, and it's I work four days a week. I have a three day weekend. That is such a benef huge totally. benefit. Huge totally. benefit when you deal with some anxiety and some stress. Mm -hmm. It is a huge benefit because I can multitask and I can do other things. Right. Um, what else? You know, so I lost my train of thought. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. But say, so, I mean, you had you had family up here mm -hmm. that you could come and mm -hmm. out of that out of that situation. Mm -hmm. um, after the so you so other family mom mom still back in Ohio. Yes. Okay. Yeah. How is that relationship? My relationship with my mother is absolutely fantastic. Awesome. Very respectful. On the same on the same page. You know, I've made amends to a lot of people and I've had to explain to them, look, I'm sorry at the time that this happened to you between you and I, I was broken mm -hmm. and I had a broken heart and I was not in the mindset to try to 
help other people, I needed to take care of myself. Right. So, right. Well, I mean, I'm glad you made the change. Right. Uh, you know, you, right. it's tough to know what you need and it's tough to know kind of how to get that, <clears throat> you know, especially if, if maybe you didn't have people up here or anything like that. Yeah. Um, so what kind of things, um, as far as you mentioned having, you know, some anxiety and stress to deal with, you know, do you know, like, what are some of the things causing that these days? Um, I, I live and deal with moderate, I will say somewhat moderate. I've been by my doctors. They say it's not that big of a case compared to others. Sure. Type two bipolar. Okay. Uh, that is not a choice. It's not someone else's fault. It's a biological condition. Mm -hmm. There's a specific gene in my mind, in my brain, whatever spinal cord, I don't know, that reacts with the glutamate in my brain. Okay. Everybody has glutamate in their brain. It's a normal thing, but my body doesn't regulate it the way it should. So I need medication. Okay. I need therapy and I need a few more bumper pads than the rest of us because, you know, I have to know my own limits mm -hmm. as far as spending money. Um, I mean, even with, I've never, I don't, I feel I don't have an issue with alcohol, but that is not out of the question. Sure. It can still happen. I've just, I'm just not someone that's, I don't really, I do go out mm -hmm. once, twice a month. That's kind of it. Sure. Um, glass of wine with food. I put wine in my food. I cook. I went to culinary school, you know, so. It doesn't. But the other part of that, and this is not to demean any of my fr my family that mm -hmm. I, you know, I was raised with, but I was exposed to certain things as a child. Um, it's kind of some rough environments. Yeah. And it, I feel like that kind of prepared me for, okay, I know this is not really the idea of where I want to go. Get there. Yeah, with, let's see with, it. Right. No, yeah. so. Okay. <clears throat> oh, your childhood prepared you for exactly. that. Like, yes. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought, I thought we were doing a sidetrack there. No. Um, okay. I you do wanna... sidetrack. <laughs> I'm pretty good at Hold that. Hold on. <laughs> where was I? Um, I'm pretty good at that. Yeah. So, what do you, do you feel comfortable talking about some of the things that you dealt with early on? Early childhood, uh, there were, it was, it wasn't that, um, unfortunately, and this, again, this isn't to demean my mom. This isn't to put her down. This is not to disrespect her, but, um, my grandmother had taken custody of me. Okay. Uh, and, and it, it, it wasn't necessarily a stable situation. Um, so early childhood, my grandmother had a farmhouse, uh, apart from her actual house. Um, in town, and we had goats, we had chickens, we had livestock. There was a huge vegetable garden. Okay. There was a wood burning stove in like the house, um, the farmhouse. There was a, 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 like this huge woods that her and her sisters would go and pick mushrooms. It was it was kind of a dream okay. job. It, it was it was it was yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there were a, a few other parental figures. Okay. Uh, the males, yeah, you know, that, and if those that are watching this and you know, when you know that some people, uh, if you don't have nothing nice to say, don't say it at all. Mm -hmm. Um, there was a lot of abuse okay. because of, because of queer identity. Okay. You know, and that. That's kind of what I was tying in with when I spoke to you uh, over the phone yeah. is that we do not feel like we're enough. So we do cause and effect. We do. It's like a, it's like a pool ball. Sure. You do, you know, X, Y, and Z because you don't feel like you're enough, you know, and that's where that came from. I, I feel apart from my mental health, okay. that acts as a catalyst, but, um, there, there were men in my childhood that were not accepting, that were not supportive, okay. that were very oppressive. Sure. Um, as far as control and what is acceptable and what is not. 
Okay. And that came from with you know with queer identity and, and, and expressing, oh well, maybe he's gay. Don't talk about it. We don't want to express that. That's we want to suppress that as much as possible. Okay. So yeah. So you um so you knew, I mean you knew from early on. Or did you know I think did you about know about um, seven or eight years old, I okay. kind of realized I'm a bit different than, <laughs> than the others. Than the people you're around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Okay. And what kind of things, I guess, what kind of, what actions were they trying to suppress? Um, I, I, right off the bat, I feel like they were, it was trying, it was feminine expression. Okay. Uh, feminine traits. Of, I, I guess, um, just certain things that were masked up by certain psychiatrists or psychologists. Okay. Well, this is what this is. This is you know, he's right. he's gay, and you're you're trying to suppress that, and like because you're not comfortable with it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So it re- really is a stereotypical like the the men in your life were like, oh, he's kind of walking weird, or he's kind of holding that ex- thing weird. Exactly that. Yeah. Yeah. That shitty yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. Or like or a spoon. One of the issues with my father was a spoon. Instead of like this, I was holding it like this. Yeah. Okay. My grandmother like Have you ever... taught school etiquette or something. Okay. And, and, and I, that's how I was raised. You put your right. napkin on your left knee and you sit up straight. And it was like, why is this a big deal? It seems that these people are more concerned about it than I am. Right. You know, and so it's literally like hold your spoon like a man. That kind exactly. of shit. Holy fuck. <laughs> yes. Yes. And now, like, it sounds so ridiculous now at our age or at this time. Well, yeah. But still. Yeah. Okay. And I guess, so you, did you feel like you felt that kind of like weight of oppression? For quite a while growing up in that environment yes and that's i feel like what i'm working through now in Still, my life right you know right. i'm 28 i'm almost 30 and i those don't go away you i no. mean you really have to go into the garden and you have to pull weeds right and it's dirty and it's messy and it's hard work but mm-hmm. it's important so yeah self work is like yeah the most important thing you can do for yourself like to just like live a good life Mm -hmm. that's it like you just want to live you just want to feel like free to live a life right and you feel like you can't do that exactly if those things stick with you that little weighted blanket that is on you right and of course you're probably i mean does it like um does it come up i mean in those feelings of self-worth is it is some of that thinking like, well, is this good enough? Is that good enough? Is there some approval I'm not getting? Right. Right. Yeah. Um, I have fallen into that quite a bit in my life. Um, as you can see, I have tattoos in my hands. Sure. You know. Um, part of the reminder, this says drop dead gorgeous. So drop dead gorgeous. It's mm-hmm. it's meant as a joke, but it's also a reminder. A kind of, do you remember the movie... Uh, a memento mori. Oh, the guy has uh, short-term memory loss. Carrie Ann Moss, early two thousands. Mm. You know what I'm talking about? Where they, they it shoot memento. It, memento. Yeah. They shoot his they wife, shoot and, they, they, and they and they he does tattoos on himself yeah. to remember certain certain things. Sure. Um, and that's kind of the mindset. It's like when you look in the mirror, you have to remember that you're enough. Mm-hmm. You have to remember that you're enough. Right. You know. I like to think so. I like to think of like for us to even sit here, mm-hmm. a sh- like a billion things had to go right in the history of the universe for us to be sitting right here. Anything goes wrong, anything goes differently. We're maybe maybe it's not as dramatic as we're not alive. Maybe we're somewhere else. But like so much had to go right for you to be existing right now, and that's kind of a cool thing to think about. And it's and it's kind of corny. And it's kind of hard to believe on a day to day when you have like so many things happen in the world and you have so many comparisons to make for yourself mm-hmm. of yourself to other things. Mm-hmm. But that's one thing. Yeah. Yeah. 
I like the tattoo idea. Um, so the comparison idea, we do this as humans, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm also a, a millennial. Um, <laughs> and I, I have gone as so far as to just uninstall Instagram off of my phone or sure. disable the Facebook app off of my phone because we're scrolling through and I, I keep I keep scrolling and I, I need approval. I need approval. Please give me validation. And it's right. like, I can't keep up with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and it's never enough. Yeah. You get it isn't. You no. get a ton of you get a ton of likes on something, then you want that many or, or more on the next thing. Right. It's yeah, it's, it's hard. Mm -hmm. We're not really meant to be that way no. or live that way. No. Um, so one thing you did, so, and I, we, we mentioned this a little bit, but tea with Tony, cause this is, that's one thing that you did to kind of put yourself out there a little bit. Kind of. Yeah. Can you tell me what, what, what was the inspiration oh. to do that? You know, well, as I said earlier, I wanted to do my own podcast show. I don't know the context of it, whether I would do a show on bipolar, I would do other odd things or strange things. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, that would take a considerable amount of time uh, as far as researching the topics and fact checking, sure. and getting the information, and recording and editing, and you know, not to mention the. the Do you the, think I research the money? <laughs> uh, yeah. No, you just go and interview people. Exactly. <laughs> uh, the amount of money it takes to like put stuff out there as far as right. iTunes or Spotify, you know. So uh, I. I do watch a lot of vlogs on YouTube. Okay. And I thought, why don't I just do my own thing? Right. Just something funny to make people laugh, you know? Mm -hmm. um, you know, PSA, you know, please, please respect your server. Right. Um, I think I did one on, if, well, if you're going to come to me and, and complain, I'm sorry, if you're going to come to me and complain about something, and I tell you, here's some advice, I have personal experience with that issue and then you don't do it and then you come back to me and say well it didn't work well you didn't literally you did the exact opposite <laughs> what the fuck i said i don't right. i'm sorry i don't care it's not it's this isn't my issue this is your issue i, mm -hmm. I don't get that but okay so you know that's kind of the spill in the tea uh, right. in in the queer culture is is we're gonna get the the real gist of the situation and we're gonna get to the bottom of it and kind of try to solve it and move forward right you know? so that's kind of the the inspiration behind right tea with tony and so. and as part of that um so spilling tea is that kind of equating to like real talk with somebody like this right. is it right right i'm being yeah. truthful i'm being very here. truthful being and blunt and, and trying to be compassionate as, as much as i can but right. you gotta like wake up and listen you know mm -hmm. now some of those topics that I've talked about, I've had to do to myself. Oh, big time. Oh, yeah. 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 Because I'm not, I'm human. I'm not perfect. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have unpaid parking tickets sometimes and <laughs> taxes and... Right. Yeah. 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 And I think that's, that's important to recognize. That's so important to recognize person to person is like this thing that I'm trying to give some advice on, I suck at it. But I know, I know what you're supposed to do. Doesn't mean I'm going to do it. Right. But... Hopefully, if I can work it out enough that I can start listening to my own advice. Right. But knowing that we're not all perfect. That's... <laughs> God <laughs> forbid. That's apparent. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That'd be scary. Oh, yeah. Um, did, did you feel like you got anything out of it? Of kind of getting that out? A few... A few people at work had, had said, you know, they're, they're really funny and, you know, but I kind of like to check the demographics and it was just, no one was really watching them. Okay. And it wasn't like I was needing that validation. It was kind of like, it honestly, it was just kind of like, I am just, I don't care right now. Sure. Like, I'm just, this isn't a priority mm -hmm. and I've got other things to deal with and I, I haven't recorded one since, I think, November. Okay. Yeah, so... But did you feel like it was cathartic in any way? Like yes. you got something yeah. out of your chest? Yeah. yeah, it was definitely a okay. few of them. Yeah. So I guess worth it when you need to. Right. When you need it. Right. Okay. So. All right. Um, so what kind of, do you want to talk about your brother? Your half brother? Oh, okay. Um, no. We that's, can. That's kind of. We can. No, it I'm, is. It is. But. 
um, you know, if my stepmother sees this, um, her and I have had conversations where we, it's tragic, yeah, but we can't cover it up. Right. Um, 60% of, there's a study done as of 2014, I think, 60% of all U.S. gun deaths are suicides. That is a very high number that we don't pay attention to. We pay attention to the school shootings, the mass shootings, the club shootings. We 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 don't we we we're we're concerned about someone breaking into our home. That's a legitimate issue, yes. Right. But you are more likely to take your own life by firearm than someone breaking in your home. Right. That's that's just the science, and that's science. It's factual. We can't take those opinions or well, I'm sorry, facts and turn them into opinions. Right. <clears throat> Um, there were legitimate times, uh, our family had had tried to get him the help that he needed, um, but he had refused. And what was he struggling with? Mental health. Um, I, I'm assuming, I, I didn't hear an official diagnosis, but I'm assuming that there were the same symptoms and issues that I was dealing with as it runs in our family. Sure. Um, as well as, you know, it runs in our family on my mom's side. Uh, so there was a lot going on at that time with my brother and his son. Um, he had just had a son, uh, and his son is now five. Um, and there was, you know, some complications with custody with, with him and the mother and, um, it was hard. So, um, and unfortunately that is where I had to cut a relationship off with my father okay. because I don't have kids. You know, someone that loses a child, that is, I'm not going to sit there and be on par with you because I'm not, in a, I don't know what it's like, but I'm still alive. And my father completely ignored me completely. Just, I don't want to deal with it. You know, and I think it's kind of that break room refrigerator syndrome where it's so chaotic and bad. Mm-hmm. You don't want to deal with it. Yeah. Um, so that's fine. That's his choice. But I also have a, a, my own free will too. Right. You know, I have my own choice. Um, he. Oh, excuse me. He would contact me and then not contact me, contact me and then not contact me. And finally, I was like, "This is this is done. You gotta you gotta stop this." You know. Okay. Um, so with my brother's passing, I feel like it kind of drove the family even more apart. You know. Right. Um, I have no. I have seen research where typically families that deal with a suicide in the family. Addiction rate goes up for those family members. Mm-hmm. With that, I mean anything, right? Anything. Um, well, I can't imagine like dealing with that right, type right, of situation right. and not thinking about like what's an easy way to escape right. reality. Right. right. So um, the the worst part was not the initial incident for me. I, I'm not anybody else's experience, but for me. It, the, the worst part was the hours, days, weeks, months, years after it happened. Yeah. Um, because the, the, just the headache, the backlash, the anger, the grief, the anxiety, the emotions, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's hard. It's hard. <coughs> Excuse me. So. Yeah. I can, and I, I can't imagine that. And, um, and a lot of unanswered, I'm sure, of just questions that will never be answered from that. <coughs> yep. Yep. So. So after that, the kind of the relationship between you and your father kind of didn't really seem, did it just not seem important trying to keep up with it anymore? <coughs> it seemed hurtful uh, for him to keep, like, going back and forth. Sure. And I just cut it off because I'm like, I can't, I can't keep doing this. Right. I can't keep doing this. How Ooh. long has that been? I keep coughing. <laughs> um, that was actually last, last summer. 
of a Father's Day. So uh, I just contacted him and I said, I can't, this is a, not a one-way street, it's a two-way street. Right. And I can't keep doing that. So, yeah. Well, that's a big choice too. It's a big kind of self-care, got to work on your own stuff choice. <coughs> yeah. There are days that I really wish there was that connection, mm -hmm. but yeah. So. What are, I guess, if, if that connection was there, I guess, what are some things that you, that you'd hope to get out of it or I don't know. He really wasn't in the big picture of my life for years. Um, and I think he did the same thing to my brother. Okay. Uh, where he's just kind of back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And there was no real commitment. No, these are my kids. I'm going to take care of them. Right. Um, so, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Um, those... I guess Kodak moments you just wish you had the yeah. dad, I guess. But like <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Like but a little more um support. Support, uh approval in that way. Yeah. Nurturing. Mm hmm So right. Yeah. So how how are you nurturing yourself now? I uh this is what I wrote down down here. Um I try to use humor. A lot, uh, making jokes, making people laugh, making myself laugh. Um, you know, listening to comedians on on Spotify, yeah. um, recordings or YouTube or um, humor is is a good medicine, I think. Um, Absolutely, because it, it just it makes things tolerable, and you know, you just feel better. Yeah. After a good laugh. Yeah. Do you have like a anybody like you're especially into right now? Um Kathleen Madigan. Okay. Uh Patton Oswalt and Lewis Black. Perfect. Lewis Black is my favorite. He's no bullshit. He <laughs> is my favorite. I I just love listening to him. Um They had a, a thing where they uh could write into him and okay. he'll read it on on his stand-up show sure and it was the funniest one of the funniest things i've ever seen right so yeah like the the funniest angriest old man right that's ever existed. right right Probably angry old, old uh, <laughs> jewish man yeah another thing is uh zen meditation um oh tell me about that so you i get up in the morning and i sit up uh, I sit on my floor and I stare at my bedroom wall. Perfect. Um, and you just. And so the purpose of that is observation. Okay. We observe life. I'm observing. I'm aware of the ceiling fan. I'm aware of you know, water of my air conditioner outside. I'm aware of the creaking in my chair. I'm aware that my, <laughs> my neighbors are upstairs. You're just being aware of reality. Sure. Being aware of your emotions, being aware of, of memories, thoughts. Being aware, being aware, being aware. <sighs> being aware is the yawning and the <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it takes time, but it's Big it's time. really it's it's important to me. And that's a daily daily practice. Yes. Yeah, nice. How do you feel? Like how do you feel right after? You're done. Um, and then like, now you're starting your day. My legs are a little numb. And <laughs> okay. I need to like kind of sit up and like stretch. It's like okay, I'm good. I'm good. We're good. So yeah. yeah. Um, I said I keep yawning, and I'm. I'm <laughs> normally, I don't talk this much. Well, yeah. No, 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 no. Wait, I wait, 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 wait. <laughs> For those watching this that know me, now <laughs> he does. He does. Yeah. Um, spending habits. Okay. Are, are kind of difficult. Um, so, but yeah. Uh, that's, it's, it. I can pay my bills. I can mm -hmm. write a check. I can sweep my, my, my kitchen floor. I can change my oil. I'm not, you know, it's not uh, completely debilitating. But there are days where it's like, okay, I, I need to take a step back and, yeah. and 
distress. And you feel, um, so you have medication for that. Yeah. Um, and therapy. Mm-hmm. And since you've, can you, can you like notice the benefit of those things? Yes. Definitely. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Could you imagine, uh, was there a time when you weren't kind of going to therapy or, you know, yes. having medication prescribed? So that was around 2014. Okay. Um, there was just chaos after chaos after chaos after chaos. And my friends at the time, I didn't really have contact with my mom or my dad, um, but my friends at the time were more, we got to get you to do something. Sure. Like this is, this is where, and I'm very, very, very thankful for all of those friends that helped helped me um, back then. But one of them was a, she's a, she was a registered nurse in Ohio and she worked in, she worked in the uh, psych ward of a uh, local hospital and she's like good friend have. these are the symptoms you're showing we need you to to go get uh go get something go go get checked out um and it it was it was a it was a moving moment you know, yeah so get help so mm-hmm. that's awesome mm-hmm. and now it's now it's a thing where you're aware you manage it you kind of notice the signs if something needs to change a little bit for yourself that's good that's yeah. a much better place to be in i'd say yeah oh yeah and yeah. um you know i guess talking about self like self-worth to this whole like thread of everything like do you have do you feel like you have the, the approval of yourself at this point that is the hardest part mm-hmm. that's the key you know, I am enough. I am enough. I have it in my phone. I have it written down on my, um, or my, the, the password for my laptop. I have, it's not the actual password, but, um, you better change it. <laughs> um, just the reminders every day. Yeah. I am enough. I am enough. I am enough. Know thyself, know yourself, know this, you know, so yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. good. So looking forward, um, I guess looking down the road, what are some things that you're hopeful for? Are you excited about getting my career up and going with barbering? Okay. Um, I'm going to have a Roth IRA. You're going to have a, a Roth, Roth IRA. Roth IRA. Yeah. No, I have one now. Yeah. yeah. I just have to change it in March. Uh, but it's just you know that first world suffering, that thinking it, like we. This <laughs> is you know what is this life? Right. Now I have. An actual Roth IRA. You're like nearly a full blown adult. I am. I can tie my own shoes. You know, <laughs> like a big boy. You know, I awesome. don't understand this. My mother. There are millennials that will complain. Mom, will you make a doctor's appointment for me? Oh sure. If I asked my mother to, she would say, "Get off your ass and go across the street to the hospital. You live across, like literally across the street from right. me. Why do I need to call you a doctor's appointment? That's what. That's my mother. You know. It's, yeah. <laughs> so half the things I hear, and I don't want to sound like a baby boomer, but half the things I hear these kids say to their kids, their parents, if I if I even looked at my mother wrong, no, 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 no. right? She right. wasn't abusive. She was just like, like, no, we're not a strong woman. Strong woman. Yeah. Don't. <laughs> there's there's a border, and yeah. I try to cross it. Obviously, I try. You know. Boop, you know. So. What are children supposed to do? Well. <laughs> Got to test every now and, again, right. now and then. Right. So. Awesome. Well, adulthood. You're getting there. What's the first step in, in barbering? So different states have different laws. Um, when I was living in Ohio, the uh, you could only go to a school. Okay. You couldn't apprentice under someone. Sure. So here in Wisconsin, you, you actually can apprentice under someone. Okay. Um, so... It's still about the same amount of hours. Okay. Uh, so, so um, the process of that is going into uh, a barber shop. Um, okay. It's kind of recommended you get you get your hair cut because if they don't know what they're doing, then right, I'm not gonna learn from them. Right. Um, but they. You pretty much you fill out an application. You're paid uh, on as a paid employee, um, and then just you start your process. That's awesome. So they get you your kit, and 
you do kind of cleaning and organizing around the facility, oh, right, but right. Uh, but uh, at first, but then you you start getting into it. So and you work your way up. Yeah. Okay. Anything before I take off? Anything else that you'd like us all to know? Um, if you or a loved one is struggling with with issues that I talked about tonight, um, one eight hundred suicide suicide hotline. Um, I'm not against taking guns away. That's not what this message is about, but that is a serious number and you should be aware. Um, so if you're thinking about that and you have something like that in your home, get help, talk to a friend, you know what I mean? Just yeah. be, be proactive because your life has value, your life has meaning. Um, so, yeah. Thank you very much. How about that? How about that? <laughs> All right, well, thank you everybody. Um, this has been my interview with Tony here. Mm -hmm. Tony, I think, thank you very much thank for having you me in your home. Yeah. Uh, everybody else, have a great night. I don't really have a sign off yet. I just, no. I just do whatever no. and I close. Yeah. So as we're sitting here talking, I'm just going to, the video's just going to stop. Yeah. And that's it. <laughs>